I mentioned earlier as we were preparing to listen to that song that it was for the practitioners and the ministers and actually it is for all of us because all of us, whether we carry a license as a practitioner or a practitioner, um, as we practice these principles of life of affirmation and life living, we are the heart and we are the hands, we are the eyes of spirit here on earth. And so we continue our August theme this morning, Living Everyday Wonder, and our theme for this month is nature. Exploring the wonder of nature, we consider all of the amazing creatures that are living on this planet, many of which we have never seen and perhaps may have never heard of before. For a moment, consider all of the animals that live in the area where you are, from the large to the small. What have you noticed today? And as I was thinking about that question, what I noticed this morning is as I was leaving to come to the center, uh, a couple of my neighbors that live, that live across from me have uh, fenced in gardens for their front area. And there's a little fence that is, that is above it. And there was a blackbird. I noticed a blackbird walking along the ledge of the fence. And um, it wasn't anything unusual, but it was a little bit unusual to see the blackbird walking along the fence. So that was my observation for this morning. Enjoy the beauty of animal and plant life and be mindful of the plants, the animals, and the insects that we misuse, abuse, or fear because of our stories that we believed. Um, and this may sound a little odd to you, uh, to some, um, but I have an agreement with spiders that come into my living space. And that is, I see you, I'm going to walk away from the space, and if you choose to continue to live, be gone when I come back. And they usually obey. <laughs> On occasion, there's one that will wind up in the face bowl in my bathroom. And they clamor to get out, they clamor to get out. And um, I have to acknowledge that sometimes I just assist them down the drain. And I say, no, let's approach this a little differently. So there was one this morning that um, I don't know where it landed from, but it, it just landed and it was, it was um, not a really large spider, but it was large enough that the sound uh, of it landing in the face bowl caught my attention. And so I said, okay, I'm going to allow you to get out if you can. And it, so it was struggling to get out. And so I said, okay, I can, I can just put a Kleenex here, let it get onto the Kleenex and then gently take it outside. And I had done that a couple of days ago with one. I managed to get it outside and I shook it off and it landed on the little mat by my front door. It was heading back inside. So, <laughs> so I hurried up and closed the door. Uh, but this morning I got as far as, as my bedroom and this spider spun her web and dropped down to the floor. And so I said, okay, now I'm going back in the bathroom, just be out of sight when I return. This is just a reminder to me, and I offer this reminder to us to remember that all life is sacred, and it is a vital part of our ecosystem. Yeah, I have a little funny story to share with you this morning. Uh, you know, in our, in our church board and leadership meetings, we discuss very serious and critical issues related to the business of the church. And so here's an example of how some other denominations uh, discuss involving squirrels occupying their building. So we start with the Presbyterians. And this building was previously occupied by the Presbyterian community, so it's fitting that we start here. The Presbyterians called a meeting to decide what to do about the squirrel infestation. And after much prayer and consideration, they concluded that squirrels were predestined to be here and they should not interfere with God's divine will. And so over at the Baptist church, the squirrels had taken an interest in the baptistry. And so the deacons decided to put a water slide in the baptistry so that the squirrels would slide down and drown themselves. Well, the squirrels liked the slide. They actually loved the slide 
and they knew instinctively how to swim. So twice as many squirrels showed up the following week. So the Lutherans decided that they were not in a position to harm any of God's creatures. And so they humanely trapped their squirrels and set them free near the Baptist church. Two weeks later, the squirrels were back when the Baptists took down the water slide. So the Episcopalians tried a much more unique path by setting out paths of whiskey around the church to kill the squirrels with alcohol poisoning. They sadly learned how much damage a drunk squirrel can do. The Catholics were very unique. They came up with a more creative strategy. They baptized all of the squirrels and made them members of the church. Now they only see them at Christmas and Easter. Not so much was heard from the Jewish synagogue. They took the first squirrel and circumcised him. They haven't seen a squirrel since. And of course, in the religious science church, we decided that we are inclusive. And so we taught the squirrels how to meditate and now they fit right in. So today we are focusing on the furry, the fuzzy, the slimy, the scaly, and everything else. From our Science of Mind textbook by Ernest Holmes, we read this on page 48, uh, 448, paragraph one. The whole purpose of Science of Mind is to reconcile the apparent separation of the spiritual world, which must be perfect, with the material world, which appears to be imperfect. For centuries, we believe that humankind was the only conscious and intelligent beings on the planet. However, over time, we have learned through studies and research that there are other creatures possessing different levels of intelligence attribute, attributed to instinctive behavior and programming. And as we study behavior, intelligence, communication, and consciousness in animals, we discover most animals are social creatures and share many of the common traits with humans. Most of life on planet Earth shares similar DNA. I'll say that again. Most of life on planet Earth shares similar DNA and comes from a common source. And so our knowledge of ourselves complements our understanding of the universe and forms the basis for a strong and healthy relationship to the creation that we live in. Fostering our connection with nature includes bringing the qualities of compassion and care kindled within ourselves. And this forms a deeper connection and care to both others and our living environment. There are many speeches in nature. Some exist in harmony and others are hostile against each other, yet nature balances itself out. And if we look at that in our relationships and in our interrelationships and in our connections with each other, there are points in our lives where we are in harmony and there be, may be points in our lives where we experience some hostility and yet nature balances everything out. Spirit balances everything out. Spending time in nature, observing the silence, engaging in prayer is a very congenial way of helping us to reflect on our own mind. And this is why we talk a lot in this teaching about spending the time in the silence, spending time in meditation, spending time in contemplation, spending time outside. It helps to reinvigorate us and bring us into a closer contact with the vastness and the allness of God. The belief in human superiority has allowed for the mistreatment and abuse of creatures that cannot protect themselves. Hunting being one example of the abuse that has contributed to the extinction or near extinction of animal species throughout the planet. Hunting disrupts migration and hibernation patterns. It also disrupts ecological systems and causes intense stress. 
And there are other examples of how we interfere with the natural flow of nature. Um, the planet is awakening. And we are called to rise up our own consciousness and awaken that within us, which we know is love. There are some ways to make a difference. And one of those ways is to give love to a family pet, to adopt an animal from a shelter, to support animal conservation efforts and to explore animal activism and veganism. And I, I want to go back and, and reflect on giving love to a family pet. Um, one of our family members had uh, an absolutely gorgeous pit bull, uh, just an adorable and loving uh, animal. And when we would go and visit, um, my wife was, she grew up with big dogs. Um, and, you know, for, she, she, she loved animals. She would not do anything to, to go out of her way to harm them. But in, in her own mind, they had their place, which was not on her physical body. And so uh, this pit bull was very loving, very friendly. And when we would go in, you know, he's just excited to see us. And uh, she would greet him and yeah, say, go away, go away. And so after he had settled down a little bit, he would always come over and he would lay on her feet. And it would annoy the daylights out of her. But I said, that's his way of saying, you're going to love me whether you choose to or not. So we all have ways of identifying and connecting with that life that shows itself in all of creation. And so we recognize that humans are linked to the rest of God's creation. And to make a change, we must be willing to understand and grow. We take action where and when we feel called to. And so our personal practical application this morning, and we have a slide that will illustrate this. Um, and for those of you who are in, who are watching us via Zoom or maybe watching us via Facebook Live, um, I invite you to, to copy down this chat, copy it in the notes or make us take a screenshot of it so that you have this as a reminder for the week. And the first one is to go outside and play. Go outside and play. Step outside of your house into nature and know that all animals have a soul. Awaken that part of your life that calls you to love all of creation. Practice mindfulness as we see what we can learn from nature. Use this as an opportunity to educate yourself and others so that you will create a lasting change and a long reaching impact on the planet, remembering that we are all one. And I close with this quote from uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith. And this was actually from his Sunday service, August of 2021. And he offers this, what is necessary to be birthed at this time in human history is a deep unblocked compassion that sweeps the globe. What is necessary to be birthed at this time in human history is a deep, unblocked compassion that sweeps the globe. We, as practitioners of the science of mind, as practitioners of spiritual living principles, we have within us the capacity to unblock the compassion and to sweep the world with love. And so our affirmation for this week is I embrace all of life, including the fuzzy, furry, and tiny. Let us say this together. I embrace all of life, including the fuzzy, the furry, and the tiny. And let us pray together. And so as we turn within, we allow our awareness to go to the recognition of the all-prevailing presence of God, this all-prevailing presence of spirit that is right here, right now, in this very moment, 
It is unchanged. It is unchangeable. And yet it is ever expanding and ever growing. Recognizing that I am an individualized expression of this oneness. I know this to be the truth for all people in all places everywhere. We're all on this path of a, and this journey of awakening to the essence of life, the essence of all life that resides within us. And so I speak my word this morning, declaring that all of life exists for the benefit of the entire planet. And that as I respect each life form, as I do my part to honor each life form, I contribute to being the heart, I contribute to being the mind, I contribute to being that loving presence here on earth. I bless those members of our community and those members and those individuals in all places who are experiencing transitions in their life. And those transitions may be joyous transitions, celebrations of the magnificent wonders of this life. And some of those transitions may bring a heart space that is filled with sadness, that is filled with temporary discontent or discomfort, or maybe experiencing dis-ease in the body. And what I know is that the truth of all of life is that God is love and that God's love is ever expanding. It is that balm in Gilead that the ancients referred to that brings healing to all that concerns us. Giving thanks for places where individuals are gathering, remembering their oneness with spirit and celebrating the truth that is revealed to them through them and as them knowing that all paths lead to back to home, this place that we call home. And so for this and so much more, I give thanks, releasing this word now back into the law, which always says yes. And I invite you to affirm this with me as we say together, and so it is. And now we have the awesome opportunity and joy to welcome into our community a newly licensed practitioner. This is always a highlight for, um, for ministers and, and for practitioners. And uh, you know, we, we come up with these distinctions between ministers and practitioners, but I, I just stand here to remind us this morning that in order to become a minister in this tradition, in this philosophy, in this teaching, one has to be a licensed practitioner first. And so the practitioner is really the highest ecclesiastical order of our spiritual community. And so once again, I invite Witty Camacho Madera to join me on stage as we install Witty as a new practitioner to our community. And Woody, I am going to uh, share with you a charge, and then there will be vows of installation, and then we will present you with your practitioner stole, and then following this, I will invite all of the practitioners, those who are here with us in our center, and those who are viewing online, to join me in a renewal of our practitioner vows. And so to our Monterey Center for Spiritual Living Community, I present to you Witty Camacho Madera, who has answered the call to serve our center as a licensed practitioner. Being an active practitioner is being in sacred service always and in all ways. And so now we install Witty as a member of our ecclesiastical team. And so the charge to you this morning, Witty, is the role of a licensed practitioner is to maintain a continual consciousness of the spiritual vision of this center. A practitioner is called to embody and to live the principles of science of mind, to practice the presence of God in all you think, say, and do. You carry out most of your work in the great and powerful silence. The fruits of your work manifest as demonstrations in your life, in the lives of your clients, 
and in the lives of our center. Over the years, your practice will change and you will change. Allow your unchanging commitment to the desires of your heart, which brought you here today to ensure a life of sacred satisfaction in your practice. Do not hold back. <laughs> give all the wisdom, understanding, and love that you have to give. Remember, love is the most important part. Do not be an island. Seek the guidance and support that you need. And most importantly, get your rest and take breaks. You know, there are some of us who come into this profession and we become workaholics. <laughs> we bring that over from other practices that we may have had. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it's important to seek guidance, to get the support that you need to take your rest and to take breaks. And now your installation bells. Um, and after each statement, if you agree, please say, I do. Do you consecrate yourself to the spiritual vision and activity of the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living? I do. Do you accept the ecclesiastical team? Myself, Reverend Cindy, Reverend Ann, Connie, Denise, and Amber, as your spiritual leaders, as your peers, and as your teachers? I do. Are you willing to lean into our love, guidance, and experience? I do. Do you commit to this center and to this ministry? I do. Okay. And now, the Monterey Center has a special gift for you, and that is your practitioner stole. I'm going to get the stole because I want to say something about it before I invite your wife up. Let's see, can, um, I think we, I want to get the, can we see the symbol? Can we see the symbol? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, the stole is a symbol of your commitment and devotion to the life of spiritual service. And you will notice those who are here in the center will notice that the practitioners and ministers are wearing their stoles uh, this morning. And um, Reverend Cindy, who is joining us online, is wearing her stole. Um, this stole is trimmed in white. This stole is white and it is trimmed in gold. It is made of a satin and a linen fabric and embossed with our science of mind teaching symbol. White is the most spiritual of colors and contains all of the colors of the spectrum representing enlightenment, knowledge, and transformation. The gold trim is intimately linked with divinity. Gold symbolizes wealth used wisely and represents illumination, love, compassion, and joy. The satin fabric and the linen are a reminder that your calling as a licensed practitioner, just as your life, is woven from the threads of many people, events, and understandings. Allow the smooth quality and the um, uneven quality of the, the smooth quality of the satin and the uneven quality of the linen to be a reminder that you are a spiritual being when you encounter those rough spots in your practice. The Science of Mind teaching symbol expresses the triune nature of God which continually reveals itself in the heart of our lives, reminding us that spirit descends into and expresses as all form. This is the sacred and it is also the divine. And you have chosen for this special occasion to have your wife Maria drape you with your practitioner stole. And so I invite Maria to now join us on stage. I'm going to give you the stole. Yeah, it goes this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, Maria, you may now uh, drape Woody Stole around his shoulders. 
And so witty. Every time you stand together. Yeah. Every time you wear the stole, you are linked with all of the spiritual practitioners and spiritual teachers throughout the globe and across the centuries. And so Monterey Center for Spiritual Living, I now present to you again, our newly licensed and installed practitioner, Witty Camacho Madeira. And uh, you may stay here, Maria, if you like. Okay, okay, <laughs> Witty, you stay. <laughs> And now I invite uh, the licensed practitioners and Nilda, would you please join us also? Licensed practitioners to join me on stage? Yeah, Connie, if, if you would like. Um, yeah. And for the practitioners and ministers who may be joining us via Zoom, this is our opportunity to renew our vows. And so I will state our commitment and I will ask you to respond by saying, yes, I am a healing presence. As licensed science of mind practitioners and ministers, we are a healing presence for the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living, for other centers for spiritual living and wherever we are called to serve in the world. And so I ask of you, do you commit your time and energy to daily meditation, study, and spiritual mind treatment for the spiritual healing of every person and or situation you are called upon for assistance. Yes, yes. I am a healing presence. Do you commit to daily spiritual practices to remain in the awareness of the presence of God, to spiritual unfoldment, and to know the absolute truth of the presence of God in all that you think, say, and do. Yes, yes uh, I am a healing presence. Do you commit to behold the wholeness of God and the fullness of God in all there is? Yes, yes I, I am, am a healing presence. Do you commit to maintaining an awareness of the spiritual identity of every person and to know the truth of all, that God is perfect, Know the truth of all, perfect God, perfect person, and perfect being. Yes, yes I, I am, am a healing breath. presence. Do you commit to consecrating your life to the teachings and principles of science of mind? Yes, yes I, I am a healing presence. Do you commit to dwelling in unconditional love, perfect peace, and thanksgiving? Yes. yes. I am a healing presence. And so it is, and so we are. Thank you, and you may be seated. If you would help Connie there. And now is our opportunity to participate in the flow of circulation. Uh, this is our time of operatory. And so on our, on, on, on our screen is, screen is our statement of, is, is our affirmation statement, our, our affirmation of abundance. Ah, I need to center for a moment. <laughs> it's just the, the energy and, and the love and, and just being surrounded uh, you know, having the practitioners here beside me just, just it just elevated my essence. So, <laughs> so it is our time to participate in our conscious giving, uh, giving of our ties and our time and our talent. And I sincerely appreciate the way that each one of you continues to support this center uh, through your time, through your talent, and through your offerings. And so, let us say our abundance affirmation together. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in the life. Through and thanksgiving, 
I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And for those who are here in the sanctuary in our center, we have a uh, donation box on our hospitality table in the center, and you may leave your offerings there. For those of you who are viewing online, uh, the ways to support the center through your finances are by mailing it in, and the address is on your screen. You may also text to give, or you may contribute through our secure website, www.montereycsl.org. And again, thank you for your continual support. And while our uh, Facebook community is still with us, I would just like to highlight a few things. Our beautiful flowers this morning uh, are a gift from Bobby Hall. So we thank Bobby for the donation of our flowers. And also this is a reminder that um, each week there is an opportunity to donate flowers to our, to our sanctuary for our service. And so we invite you to take advantage of that. Um, today uh, and each third Sunday following, practitioner Denise Kaku is offering soul collage. We had it going on for uh, several years here at the center prior to the pandemic. And then uh, as, as life opportunities invite people to move into new experiences, uh, the facilitators of that program have moved on to different and greater experiences. So now Denise, who is a trained facilitator in Soul Collage, will be bringing the experience back to the center every third Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. And so we invite you to join uh, both live and via Zoom. We're doing it via Zoom also. Yeah. And uh, the suggested investment is a donation of $35 and uh, no one will be turned away. So all are invited to participate. And then next Sunday following service will be our monthly spiritual living circle, spiritual living discussion circle. And we will be discussing articles from the Science of Mind magazine. And this month, the uh, topic is nature. And also next Sunday, joining us in person, uh, will be our guest speaker, and it will be our very own Reverend Cindy Harp. And so uh, we're welcoming Reverend Cindy home back live into the community, into the space. And I will be on vacation. I am going on a fitness retreat. And so when I come back, I may look a little different, or I may choose to sleep. <laughs> But I appreciate your support of the yes, speakers that come in when, when I take my rest. Uh, and so as we say thank you and good morning to our Facebook uh, virtual community, we do invite you to return next week. Uh, and the, as we close out the, the theme for the month of August, which is nature, and the topic will be naturally divine. And so to our virtual community, we say thank you, we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank God for you.